first of all, it's a pleasure to meet you. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Well, thank you. I'm very pleased that you've come to interview me from ISIS. Um, I'm Larry Sanders. I grew up in New York. I've been in Oxford for 45 years or so. Uh, I've been a Green Party County Councillor and I stood for the Green Party in the parliamentary elections in, Green, in Oxford West and Abingdon in May. Uh, <clears throat> my young brother Bernard is, is running for President of the United States, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Indeed. I mean, as, as someone who's pretty well acquainted with kind of US and UK politics, yes. Do you see any parallels between sort of the rise of Jeremy Corbyn here and your brother Bernie Sanders in the US, kind of representing almost a left-wing surge? Yes. Well, the way I, the way I see it actually is that it's a historical moment. We've had 40 years. This is not a, a new phenomenon, but for the last 40 years, there's been a redistribution of wealth and income in the United States and in Britain and in other countries. Uh, more in the United States, but Britain not far behind, redistribution from the bulk of the population to the very, very rich. The top 1% or indeed really the top 10th of 1%. Which means that there are a large number of people who have been adversely affected. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's what, to be adversely affected when you start off poor is quite disastrous. It may just be uncomfortable if you are more comf better off but it's still an effect on you and on your children, on your expectations. And in Britain, perhaps the clearest way is that in, not only do we have more poor children, children living in poor families, uh, more people living in poverty, wages for a large part of the population have gone down, quite substantial underemployment as well as unemployment. In the United States, in, over that whole 40 year period, uh, the average income, has, has not risen. Mm. So all the technological advance we've seen in that 40 years, the benefits of that have gone to this tiny fraction of the population. And therefore people are noticing it. They may not know why it's, they feel hurt, but they are feeling hurt. So I think there is an underlying political social issue mm -hmm. that uh, Bernard and uh, Jeremy Corbyn are mm. responding to and why uh, people see them as uh, important figures to them. Mm. I mean, it's, it's interesting because they're, if you just look at the mainstream media, um, they're very quick to criticise both Bernie Sanders and Corbyn. Um, and in particular, they, they claim that their views are pretty outdated. I mean, what, what would you say about that? Really? Well, th th this is a campaign and the media by and large are on one side. But Bernard calls the billionaire party. Uh, and in Britain, it's 100% it's the billionaire party. I, if you look into the, all the major uh, right-wing papers, which, are the, which 80 or 85% of people get their information mm -hmm. from, they are all owned by billionaires. And, and to add to that, they're all owned by tax exile billionaires. <laughs> so the, the content is rubbish. The, the, the intention is very clear. There's one, there is a battle waging, uh, a traditional class warfare battle, uh, and one side has, is winning, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I see Corbyn and, and Bernard as part of the fight back against that victory. Mm -hmm. But it will be a brutal uh, campaign, and it's by no means certain that the majority will win. Yeah. And that's been one of Bernard's mantras is mm -hmm. that we, in, in talking about the, the U.S., live in, in an oligopoly, mm -hmm. i.e. where the control of the con economy and the politics is in the hands of a very small number of people. Mm -hmm. And it's an open question as to whether they can be beaten. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easier for Corbyn to take this position of leadership as effectively an anti-establishment candidate than Bernie Sanders, considering sort of how Stay he dominates? <coughs> Stage the one was easier for for, for Jeremy to take over the leadership of the, of the Labour Party, mm -hmm. considering that by some mistake the establishment Labour Party had opened the door to the members of the Labour Party actually making a decision. They will not do that again. Mm -hmm. But stage two of becoming Prime Minister is more difficult for Corbyn. Bernard has to do it in one go. Uh, mm -hmm. he ha it's harder for him to get the nomination. I think it won't be very difficult for him to win the presidency if he gets the nomination. Uh, so 
he's got his second stage is easier and and the the two systems of course are different the parliamentary system means that Corbyn is is tied into the parliamentary Labour Party where it is much more independent of the parliament of the Congressional Democratic Party yeah. because the United States system the president the executive has independent powers mm -hmm. so in just on that note what do you think is the place for anti-establishment politics in general? Do you think if it doesn't succeed in sort of getting within the institutional framework, do you think it can leave a particular message? Well, in democratic politics everything is about what information and views can get to the general public. So the campaigns, whether they win power immediately or not are very significant. But what you have, if, if my analysis is right, I th and I think the evidence is, is, you know, the statistics are very clear, you're going to have a large number of people who are feeling frustrated and angry. Mm -hmm. Now that frustration and anger traditionally has been used by right-wing politicians and, and as an anti-immigration, as a racist kind of policy, and it's quite normal if you have a difficult political time, the normal thing, the, the Farages and the uh, Trumps are not accidents, and the, and the National Front in France. This is what happens when people are unhappy and frustrated. And you really almost have a, have a, a, a dichotomy. Either the people who are talking about the causes, the real causes, the economic causes, the social causes of, of malaise, win, or the people who, or that anger is used in a different way. Mm -hmm. I think historically we're at a very uh, dangerous point, tipping yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Do you think for sort of our generation, the student generation, our, our views are changing as such? Um, whereas maybe 10, 20 years ago they were characterised by kind of a lot of class dealignment, people no longer associating with their class background and wanting to kind of get on mm. the property ladder and yes, succeed yes. in that sense. Do you think that's changed now and there's more solidarity in a way? It's, it, I, I re you probably know more about that <laughs> certainly in Britain than, than I do because uh, I'm not in the right age uh, dem demographic uh, <laughs> to know that. It certainly does seem that, that Bernard has gotten a huge amount of support as you you will know from, from young people. Although by now, young is up to 45 in America. <laughs> He's got a heavy preponderance of support for people between 18 and 45, which is probably not exactly young. Um, so I'm hopeful that, that something is happening. Uh, it, it's very hard to know because it, it, certainly in, in, the, in the British context, I'm not sure how many, how much young people are, are aware. You, you, you will know more. I hope you, I hope they are very aware. I think it may, because of the domination of the media by the right wing, uh, and the domination of, of labour. I mean, the import, one important thing to note is, it's by no means clear uh, that Jeremy Corbyn will be in, able to change the Labour Party. Mm. The Labour Party establishment is very powerful, and it has been very consistent. The number of MPs that really supported him, as I'm sure you know, were, what, 20 or something out of, okay. out of 200, so a very tiny mm -hmm. fraction. Uh, and they are not going to give up power easily. Mm -hmm. The thought that during, we, we, there are things to watch out for, I don't know, perhaps I can put this in here. In early March, there is scheduled to be a second reading of the NHS reinstatement bill. Now, if the Labour Party cannot support the NHS, which it created, was its greatest achievement, then I think you will say, I will say certainly, that the Labour Party has not changed. Mm. Uh, when Caroline Lucas, the Green Party MP, introduced it last year, it was supported by Jeremy Corbyn and about 10 or 12 other Labour people, the Scottish National Party and so on. If there is not a large Labour support for ending the privatisation and reversing the privatisation of the NHS, then that will be a very bad sign. Mm. And so far, I, I actually we in the delegation going to see Heidi Alexander, the the, uh, the Labour Minister, mm. uh, today, later today, yes. <laughs> uh, and we'll find get more of a clue. I'm not optimistic, but anyhow, that's the general line. Whether whether the young people are really aware of 
of what's happened and why things are so difficult. I think you're quite right that things are difficult for young people. Even, even young people with quite good educations are going to find it difficult. Getting into the housing market is astonishingly difficult. So it may well be that they're noticing that. They probably are not noticing how what's happened to the, to the uh, NHS uh, because the control of media is such it's very difficult to get these mm -hmm. things across. Um, so I'm hopeful that young okay. people are noticing, but I'm not certain it's happening. Mm. So on a final note, do you think there is a, a small chance that figures like Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders will change mainstream politics in favour of people who are alienated? I think there's a, there is a very real chance of that that is their function, uh, and to the and I was following Bernard's progress much more than Jeremy's progress, um, and I think is very, there is a chance that in fact at this very moment, probably the next week or so, will determine the outcome of the of the Democratic primaries, uh, the Democratic nomination. As you probably are aware, Bernard has caught up catching up yep. to Hillary ahead of her in crucial places. Uh, she's come back with a hugely uh, destructive uh, and vicious counterattack, and the question of what will come through mm -hmm. remains to be seen. If Bernard wins the nomination, he will be elected president because he will appeal to a portion of the Republican Party on the basis that on their class interests, their personal interests as people who are being screwed by the system, uh, they should vote for him and not for mm -hmm. a right-wing candidate, and I think that will. So the next few weeks may be very important for for world history, at least for the next decades. Absolutely. Well, we wish him the best of luck in his campaign, and thank you very much. Well, thank you very much.